what's going on pickles I'm back at it again with another vlog Jasmine and I are kind of matching a little bit I actually put a top on her that has like this kind of flare flare and lift and uh, she it was like falling over her shoulders so I decided that's maybe a top for her when she's a big sister because she'll be bigger and a sister but uh, the top was white so we weren't really matching that much anyway so I changed her into jean pants and all blue um, so now we are matching and Nick decided not to match us because he's a savage. Um, we're going over to my parents' second house to watch a movie with my dad. My dad is spoiling us with pad thai, so we're going to have some pad thai. Nick got some noodles and some stuff. I got some fried rice. My dad probably got his favorite thing, drunken noodles or whatever. And um, yeah, every time we go get pad thai, he's like, what's my order again? I'm like, dad, come on now. So, um, yeah, we are just meeting him there. He's on the way back with the food, and we're on the way there. Um, my mom is at their first house, their original house, so that's why we're not going there, because my mom is special. Long story short, my mom and I have been not on great terms ever, but I've been really working hard for the past three years to try to be on good terms with her, and she's made it very clear that nothing I do will ever be good enough, so I just decided to not stress on that anymore. I'm a mom of three at this point, I don't need to be worried about anybody else but myself and my family. Um, I'm good on that. My dad is actually going to uh, share some little tidbits and stuff. And we're just going to have a nice gossip session, vent sesh. We're about maybe five, eight minutes away from this place. And this is actually Nick and I's old house. We used to live here. Um, my parents rented it out to us, Nick, myself, and my brother. And, and some miscellaneous friends who are not really friends anymore. But... Because, you know, when you live with people, you find out who they really are, and then it just gets messy. Uh, Jasmine is excited. We brought her outside into the car, and then we realized we didn't have the keys, so we are trying to get her back inside because we're not going to let our two-year-old be around the street without supervision. And she started screaming and crying, like, we're still leaving. We just need to go find the keys. So we ended up going inside, finding the keys on the kitchen table. And I figured they were there because the last place we went was the store. And I was like, the store, they're either... It's either around the room where we normally put the keys somewhere, or in the kitchen so that's where i was thinking nick found them in the kitchen i wanted to wear something that exuded my pregnant body more but Mom. these are actually hand-me-downs from nick's mima uh, we went and saw her last weekend we're gonna see her this weekend so basically our christmas plans are well today's the 21st the 22nd my mom is taking jasmine for christmas photos at 6 a.m i have a doctor's appointment tomorrow at 2 um, and then after that, on the 22nd, or I'm sorry, on the 23rd, we have a nice chill day. And then we're going to go see Nick's Mima and his dad over at Mima's. And I requested for Nick's dad to make me some mac and cheese because I love mac and cheese. And I've been craving it, especially since I've been pregnant. And I know Nick is excited for it too because his dad makes great mac and cheese. Um, I don't know what else all they're serving over there, but mac and cheese was really the only thing I was worried about. I was like, if there's mac and cheese, I'm coming. I'm good on that. So uh, after that, on the 24th, my mom is having a Christmas party, all pajama themed. I'm wearing a onesie, Jasmine's wearing a, I think her blue onesie is what we decided on, right? Uh, yeah, maybe. I forgot what we decided on. I think I hung it up in the closet, what she's wearing. We have something for Jasmine, but we're brain farting right now. She has a onesie as a backup plan, and then she has a a fit that I think we chose and then Nick is going to wear his uh, red plaid that we got at the store the other day if y'all didn't see that vlog make sure to tune in and he also has a little snowman hat Jasmine goes no man no man <laughs> so we are very excited for that and then after the 24th pajama party at my mom's house my grandma's having a regular Christmas party on Christmas which is later in the afternoon both parties are later in the afternoon I believe so Nick and I are gonna spend Christmas morning on the phone with his relatives who live out of state. His grandma in Georgia, we're gonna FaceTime her and his mom in South Carolina and open up the gifts they got us in front of them. And then they'll open up the gifts we got them. So I'm excited. I think they're gonna love their gifts. I chose them great. Nick, Nick's dad already opened up his Christmas gift, loved it. He put it front and center on his um, alcohol stand or whatever, cause it was, a, it was like a white whiskey glass um, engraved with his name. And uh, yeah, that is what our plans are. We don't really have too much of an eventful vlog today, so hopefully you guys bear with me. Um, the vlogs I try to make up about 20 minutes. As y'all know, we did a cookie decorating competition between Nick, myself, and Jasmine. So if you haven't checked that out, it was the last vlog, go check that out. Um, I got mixed votes between me and Jasmine winning. Nick wasn't even mentioned. So it was a very good time. <laughs> <laughs> but we are very close to my dad's house at this point, so I will check in with y'all pickles later. Alright, who on this? Cool. 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 Cool.
cool. Got the food for Nick. Food for Sid. I'm excited. Thank you. Sure, I don't can do it. Let me take a good look around. Been a minute. Oh, you're now? Yeah, it's been a minute. Cause last time you and I came through, it was just like a brief stop in. Right, right, right. Yeah, but again, that was months ago at this point, so I didn't even get to any all done stuff since then, so. Interesting, interesting. So, these are the old digs slash my parents' second digs. But this is not how the house looked when the material looked like. <laughs> but anyway, we're gonna eat and watch a movie, have a good time. And yeah, this is a cute little fit me walking. Well, we have finished the movie. I know I'm in the same exact spot, but um, Five Nights at Freddy's was really good. Um, I guess the entire plot, halfway through the movie, Nick beat me to one of the plot points, but I was like, I probably would have put that together if you'd give me two more minutes. But um, I knew who the bad person was. I knew um, who the two bad people were, is what I'm gonna say, because I don't wanna spoil it for y'all. But long story short, um, my dad is in his office finishing up some work. Nick and I got some great family time. We got some free food. And I'm gonna see my, if my dad wants to feel my belly before we leave. So I'm very excited to head home, get some rest. I don't know if I'm gonna go live tonight. I do need to make some more content for this vlog. So maybe I'll play some Fortnite. I don't really know yet. But I got this pimple on my lip. It's not a white hit yet. It's really just like a red spot. It's super annoying and it's itchy. So, um,. Yeah, but I think this fit is super cute. Do y'all like my fit? It's an old lady fit, basically. But I think I look good in it. It's like my maternity fit. So, yeah. Um, movie was 10 out of 10, in my opinion. It was very much buffering for us because we were watching it on Amazon Fire Stick, but I, I'd watch it again, definitely. We are finally back home, Pickles. Yeah. Everything went good and well at my dad's, and... Um, we uh, enjoyed the Five Nights at Freddy's movie, like I mentioned, and this girl was running around throughout the whole movie. The first half, she was pretty good sitting down. Nick is playing one of his new games or whatever. He's got to comb out Jasmine's hair. She's going for a picture with Sam. No. No. She's going for a... She's going for a picture with Santa tomorrow with my mom, 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. My doctor's appointment's at 2 p.m. So I'm going to pick Jasmine up after my appointment. The funny thing is my doctor's office quoted me $0 or up to $100 for my myriad genetic testing. You need to stop, for real. They quoted me $0 up to $100 for my genetic testing to make sure the kids were fine, to make sure their genders were good, whatever, whatever. And now I've just gotten a bill in my mail for $1,000. Like, I'm not kidding. $877 and $230 something or whatever. Uh, so, I'm not paying that regardless. But I will call my insurance tomorrow before my doctor's appointment. See if they'll call or whatever and fight the bill. And then when I go to the doctor's office, I'll say, hey, y'all quoted me this. Myriad sent me this. What's up? So, we shall see. We shall see. But Nick and I are just waiting for uh, the locks to arrive they're coming like within an hour or two and then we're also getting a couple of christmas gifts from nick's mom for jasmine today so we're waiting on those last couple of mail items to get here and then we'll open them get it taken care of we're gonna put jasmine in the bath and uh, get her ready for picture with santa tomorrow i personally think her hair looks great i think it's done but my mom has higher whiter standards and i do need to have a conversation with her about that like what is what is wrong with her hair like you tell me and, and try not to Try not to offend me. So long story short, it's all good. We're gonna comb through her hair anyway or whatever. 
make sure it's presentable even though like i said it's perfectly presentable right now um and make sure she looks good for this christmas photo um i am relaxing i threw out my freaking back i was using the bathroom and then i got up from the toilet and my back had like a very like bad pain in it so i just laid down immediately started relaxing i don't know what the pain in my it's like a sharp pain up and down my back so i'm just relaxing right now and i can feel the twins just hanging out vibing What you about to do, Nicholas? Um, I'm about to let the water fill up a little bit more and then crush out Jasmine's hair. You excited? Excited for what? To brush out her hair. Yeah, I love brushing out Jasmine's hair. <laughs> well, at least you you earn earn your keep tomorrow because she's gonna be gone for the day. For the morning, I should say. Actually, it's more accurate. Uh, what are you leaving? I'm gonna leave at probably 115 or 145. So if she's gonna be going from six to I don't know three, because I'm gonna bring her home at three. Okay, so you're just gonna be gone from one from to two three. to three. Two to three. I'm gonna be gone from two to three. I'm gonna get her at probably 245. Come home and um, I don't know if she'll be all dolled up in her Christmas stuff or if she'll be back. If it's not, hopefully it's not as ugly as the last year's suit. That, that, that fit was so... We still need to take our Christmas photos in front of the tree. And, and like, you need to be in your flannel pajamas. Jasmine needs to be in a onesie or in her Christmas fit for tomorrow. And I need to be in my uh, Mrs. Claus fit for some photos and then a onesie for others. So we should do that tomorrow or Christmas Day, just depending on the vibrations. I agree. Cool, cool, cool. We can take a Christmas photo and we're all holding guns. This is where I cut the cameras. <laughs> Nick's got Jazz in the bath and I putting y'all down for a second so I can leave the bedroom. <sighs> the Christmas tree is lit up, looking beautiful, looking gorgeous. I told my mom a couple weeks ago yeah we decorated the tree you know i guess it's not fully done because we didn't do as many ornaments as we could jasmine and i got tired decorating it but i still think it looks good and she's like no the tree's not decorated until all the green is covered and i'm like who wants to do all that <laughs> so the tree's done the tree is done christmas is in a few days the tree is finished um light light i have my food here from what my dad bought us. I'm about to heat it up, about to eat it up. Nick's like, the food wasn't as filling as Panda Express. I'm like, yeah, because it was actually authentic. <gasps> anyway, <laughs> I made this cheese dip for breakfast. Yummy, yummy. Super delish. And I need to put it away because cheese is not supposed to sit out all day. Um, we left around 2, 2.30. And the cheese dip was made at like 1.00. So uh, it's a bit needed to get put away, to be honest. But I need to find lids and compatible lids and everything and bowls. I'm looking here, trying to see what would work. So I got two lids right here that look compatible with these bowls. So I got one bowl. Perfect. So I will use this one because it's pretty much a lot of cheese. Sorry about the glare. Sorry that I can't stand y'all up either. Awkward. Oh my goodness. So I saw a post on Twitter that OP was talking about my brother-in-law was trying to ask my daughter, four years old, for a hug. And she said no. And then he asked her again, well, can I have a hug, please? She said no. He said, well, what about two hugs? She said no. What about three hugs, four hugs, five? No, 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 no. And he said, well, you said you were going to give me a hug earlier. And she's like, yeah, but now I don't want to. And so OP and his wife realized this and gently told him, OP gently told him, hey, man, you know, let's grab a beer outside. You, you should really respect kids' boundaries. You should respect everybody's boundaries. She said no. That means no. There's nothing more to explain if she didn't want to give you a hug in that moment she didn't have to give you a hug 
um, and you badgering her, it's not going to change that. And you shouldn't be badgering anybody for anything like that. And the uh, brother-in-law supposedly like an older white guy, 50, in a position of power at work. And it just makes you question, you know, how many people's boundaries has he violated with his pestering? And then there were a bunch of American flag in their bio people talking about OP is overreacting, trying to insist or imply that brother-in-law is a creep. OP is putting their own projection trauma onto the child, whatever. I'm like, y'all are all very much exposing yourselves that you don't care about anybody's boundaries, whether it be a child's or other people's. Um, like you have a right to someone else's bodily autonomy. You don't have a right to anything. First of all, if the child doesn't want to give you a hug, you don't need to get a hug. Second of all, why are y'all defending this? It's like, you're defending the fact that somebody wanted a hug and was told no and then kept badgering for a hug. Why? Like, why? And they're like, well, the, the brother-in-law is not a creep and he's trying to make him seem like the creepy uncle. He's trying to paint him out to be... And the OP very explicitly explained, I had a very gentle heart-to-heart -heart conversation with him. I was in no way accusatory, but seemingly the next day they packed all their bags and pulled out of the driveway. Didn't even say goodbye to my wife or my daughter, which is very weird because we were looking forward to spending time with their six month old. Um, my sister's my best friend, OP said, my sister's my best friend. And although I had the chat with her brother-in-law, I didn't think it would spiral out of control like this. I tried to make it very heart-to-heart -heart and gentle, but if you're gonna overreact like that and leave a family gathering, so to speak, because somebody asked you to respect boundaries, that speaks more volumes about your character. And anybody who was on quote unquote brother-in-law's side is a weirdo to me. Weirdo alert alarms going up, weirdo alert alarms going up. Anyway, it was just a little bit of a think piece based on a story time. Cheese. <laughs> uh, I have more stuff to tell y'all, but I gotta put this cheese away come on cheese come on out cheese i love rotel rotel comes in a can but this is a cheese dip called rotel it's a uh, velveta or easy cheese italian sausage or turkey beef ground beef with rotel and uh, to, to prevent the thickening, you can add milk or cream of chicken or cream of mushroom. So, just making sure I get as much as I can from off the bottom before I close it. And now I gotta soak this pan. Perfect. I almost ran into that freaking, almost ran into the wall right there, or the cabinet. Now the other think piece is actually about my personal life. If y'all have opinions or whatever, whatever. So my friend, let's call her Girly Girl. So Girly Girl is, ah, close this, put it in the fridge. Okay. So first of all, I folded Jasmine's clothes. Every time she, um, every time she has time alone in her bedroom, she opens up the window, lets the dog in, and she tears all her clothes out of her drawers and throws them on the floor. Now her clothes were not folded up because of this, because I folded them and then she obviously kept messing up the place. So I just gave up for about two weeks and then I refolded them all today. So it looks really good in there. And I wanted to show y'all real quick. And I also made her bed, as y'all saw. So everything's nice and folded. And everything looks good and organized. So if she gets in here and starts tearing stuff up again, I'm gonna be upset. But our locks for the windows are supposed to come soon. But anyway, about the story with Girly Girl. So Girly Girl has a boyfriend. And her boyfriend is five years older than her. She is 21, he is 26. And they've been together for about a year. Now, he has two baby mamas one kid each, and he doesn't have good relationships with his baby mamas, and he doesn't have consistent relationships with his kids. She's considering becoming baby mama number three and considering marrying him. Now, he has not gotten her a ring or anything. They talk about marriage, they talk about getting engaged, but there have been no steps towards that. 
and she and him are constantly going back and forth and fighting and whatever to where sometimes she has to pack her stuff and leave because they do live together currently at his mom's house so they pay rent at his mom's house along with his other adult siblings who are like 19 and 20 or whatever 16 19 20 like that and then he's like the odd one out being 26 still living with his mom so i think that's a red flag i think that's weird um but she's obsessed with him she loves him whatever so whatever two baby mamas another red flag also think that's weird but you know whatever whatever let it she's cool with it i'm cool with it whatever whatever now she told me that he goes out and when he goes out with his friends clubbing or goes out drinking or bar hopping or going out to you know zoo 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 he ignores her messages and not only does he ignore her messages like and I'm not talking leave her on delivered I'm not talking turn his phone off he reads her messages and ignores her so she said him responding to me while he's out would be a step up from where we are it would be the least he could do to be communicative communicative with me while he's out now that's another red flag because my husband dreads spending time away from me anytime that we are apart he's like oh my gosh where, where's my wife I miss my wife I want to be with my wife you know, Sydney, you know, I don't want to go to the store alone. I want you to come to the store with me. You know, hey, I'm going down the street to get gas. Come with me. You know, let's all go out to eat together. I don't want to go pick up the food without y'all. You know, me and my daughter. So it's a very red flag to me that he's needs space from her so often. Like, let's say once a week he needs space from her, even though it's more like three times a week. But he goes out for handfuls of hours at a time and doesn't respond to her. Now, I think that's a red flag. Um, also, he has a female best friend. And his female best friend does not like my friend, girly girl. So his female best friend, he also spends multiple hours at her pal at her at her place, her crib, her house. Um, he does that often. He argues with girly girl all the time about his right to spend time with his friends and his right to be with his best friend and how his best friend has done so much for him in the past. Like let him crash with her when he needs a spot to stay. She buys him the zoot zoot zoot. She buys him drinks sometimes, whatever, whatever. So he argues about his right to hang out with her all the time. Now, I think that's very weird. Why do you have another woman in your life who's constantly making girly girl compete? You know what I'm saying? And it's it's like if she's just your friend, your girlfriend shouldn't have any issue establishing her boundaries and territory. Because if you have a girlfriend, you're supposed to spend 90% of your time with her, not your friends. And if you have a girlfriend who you want to engage, who you want to make your wife, Everybody knows you should put your wife first and be spending maximum time with her because relationship take, relationships take nurturing, relationships take time and patience, and it's not something you can give equal energy to your friends. Now, he's claimed he's reduced how much time he spends with his friends, he's reduced how much time he spends with his girl best friend, and he's, you know, trying to do better, whatever, whatever. But my friend, girly girl, has said that in their arguments or whatever, she feels like she's always saying the same thing. I want you to spend less time with your best friend. Not that I don't want you to spend time with her. Y'all are friends. I get it. Whatever. Just less time. Like you go over there for three, four, five hours at a time. Why? You know what I'm saying? Uh, when you go out with your friends, in, including your best friend, sometimes you go out for three, four, five hours at a time. And again, that's weird to me because my husband always wants to be around me. So I'm starting to think like maybe he just doesn't like you that much because for him to be yearning for time away from you is weird to me. Why would he be constantly yearning for time away from you? Like, uh, like I don't know. That's just a red flag to me. So those of you in long-term relationships, those of you who have been in a relationship for a year plus or you're married, do you find that weird? Um, your significant other hanging with friends a handful of hours, multiple days a week. Do you find it weird um, to have a opposite gender best friend who you also hang out with sometimes alone multiple hours of the week? Um, is that a red flag to y'all? Is that something you're cool with? I would love to hear y'all's opinions on that. Now, I've told Girly Girl multiple times, I don't think he's right for you. I think you being a stepmom at 21 is really weird. You know, he's fully developed. He's 26 and men develop fully by 25. So he's not going to grow much and he's not going to change much. He's no longer adaptable. He's no longer in the space where you can mold him. So it begs the question, why is she staying? Well, she says she loves him. I love him, I love him, I love him. And he's working on it. He's, he's working on it. He's working on this. He's working on that. He's, he's grown so much in the past year. You have no idea how much he's grown. And I'm like, mm, you're begging for stuff from a 26-year-old, 25 at the time. Stuff that you shouldn't be begging for. Now she'll argue with me. Well, you complain about your husband. You know, he's an a-hole to you sometimes, whatever, whatever. I'm like, yeah, but he's making 20-year-old mistakes, 21-year-old mistakes, 22-year-old mistakes 
that get corrected pretty quickly aside from the occasional oh i'm not gonna pick my shoes up or i'm not gonna pick my pants up and that's just a regular marital fight right you're arguing about his time management his money management because again y'all are living at his mom's house because how after a year y'all haven't saved up to move out of his mom's house that's also quite fishy to me where's the money going you know what i'm saying she's just now started to budget over the last month or two talking about oh yeah our money's getting right our money's getting right and i'm like he should have been had your money right he's 26 but um my friend got him his job my friend got him back into school and basically she's the only one in the relationship with a car so she lets him drive her car around anytime he calls she goes to pick him up and pays for his ubers or whatever whatever so I'm like, uh, I feel like you're doing a lot more in the relationship than he is. And that's just my perspective outside looking in it. Granted, I don't know all the details, but it seems like he's using you. Like he may love you. Sure. That's fine. But he, it also seems like he's using you. He's using his female best friend for whatever resources she has. And he's just a bum, long story short. So, um, that's my personal opinion on the situation. I really shouldn't speak on her situation, but it's, com it's purely anonymous, purely hypothetical or whatever. And so basically, she's a little salty at me because last night I told her, hey, girl, just so you know, can I be frank with you? She said yes. And I said, well, because your relationship prior to this one was abusive, physically, emotionally, mentally, whatever, I think that you don't really know what you're supposed to be treated like. So I feel like you're truly settling in this relationship and I feel like you could do better. And um, I think because I brought up her past traumas, she kind of got upset with me because she goes, OK, I'm going to bed now. And I'm like, okay, good night. And then I text her in the morning, called her in the morning. She leaves me on red all day. And then finally goes, oh no, I'm not mad at you by just saying, nah. So I go, are you, I hope you're not mad at me. Hope I didn't offend you. And she just goes, nah. So she one worded me and I was like, okay, whatever. I'll let her do her own thing. I'll let her vibe. But I just think it's weird situation to put yourself in at 21. She's so young, she's so smart, she's so vibrant. And she's pretty much giving all her energy and resources to this guy. Uh, for for love i guess so what are y'all's thoughts on it that is the situation at hand